Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, everybody, welcome once again to this class. Let me adjust my headset. Okay, let's, uh, Hello, let's get started. Hi, Byron, good evening. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you now, and uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I'm going to call your name from the attendance list. When you hear your name, please let me know. Here we go. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Elisa Arelí López Campos. Present teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Present. Welcome. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. Presente. Welcome. Present. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. I'm here. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present. I'm here. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Present teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Elis, no, sorry. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. 
Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin. Present, teacher, present. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Okay, we start now. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English One, and this is me, Ivan Donyan, at your service once again. Today is this is session number seven, and today is September the sixth of two thousand twenty-three or twenty twenty-three, whichever one you prefer. So, what are we going to do? Well, take a good look at this. Okay, lesson objective. In this section, participants will learn and practice using verbs that go with problems. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, it's some vocabulary that we need to practice. Okay, so everybody take a look at this. It's recognizing problems, okay? Recognizing problems, there's a vocabulary here. These verbs are often used to talk about problems. Use the verbs to replace the bold face words and phrases in the sentences below. And what are those, okay? You have aggravate, okay? There's Right here there's aggravate a problem aggravate the problem means to make it worse okay that's the meaning of that when when would you aggravate the problem you make the problem worse than it was before then you have avoid the problem avoid the problem you don't deal with the problem okay you avoid it no 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 i don't want to do anything you cause a problem okay uh, something happens because of you it is your fault when you cause a problem. You deal with a problem, meaning you have to face the consequences of the problem, okay? It affects you, you have to deal with the problem. You identify a problem, okay? You are capable of recognizing what the problem is. Like when you go to a doctor, okay? First thing that the doctor does is identifying your health problem. That's the first thing, okay? And after that, he uh, provides you with uh, medication or treatment. Then you have ignore a problem. When you ignore a problem, you pretend the problem doesn't exist. Okay, you just ignore the problem. You run into a problem is when you find the problem or you encounter a problem that you didn't know existed. You run into a problem, okay? And finally, you solve a problem. You come up with a solution for the problem. That's the vocabulary right there. And again, it's aggravate a problem, avoid a problem, cause a problem, deal with a problem, identify a problem, ignore a problem, run into a problem, and solve a problem. So before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in this section? Anything you may have uh, a question about? If that's the case, it's a good chance for you to uh, raise your hand. Yeah, Ana Cecilia. Uh, deal with? Deal what with a mean? problem. Okay, yes. basically when you deal with a problem, um, Technically what you do, okay, is that you try, I mean, you have a problem, okay? And you have to face the consequences of the problem, but at the same time, you try to find a solution. That's to deal with a problem. For example, imagine that it rains a lot, okay? Like these days, it's raining a lot. And then you look at the rooftop, not the rooftop, but you look at the ceiling and then you detect, okay, that there is a leak, okay? Water is coming inside. So what do you do? You can ignore the problem, but it's a big problem. So what do you do? You deal with the problem. So the first thing you do, you get a bucket. You put the bucket under the leak and for the moment, that gives you a temporary solution to the problem. But what do you do the next day when it stops raining? You have to get on top of your roof. You try to identify the problem. Ah, and then you try to fix it. If you can't fix it, you have to call someone so that they can do it for you. So all this process is dealing with a problem. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the idea. Thank You're welcome. You. You're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary? 
Oops, my window is open here. <laughs> uh huh. It's kind of hot tonight. Any other questions about the vocabulary? No more questions? Okay, then. So you're going to use this vocabulary right here to solve the first exercise. And what is that? Okay, take a look. It's the knowledge check. Okay, knowledge check 2.5 which is pretty much what exercise, let me say, um, section two, just give me a moment, this web page is loading. Okay, it, this is uh, 2.5, give me a second. Two point five right here. This is the knowledge check we're going to do right now. OK, uh, it can be a bit hard because you're supposed to complete the whole thing. OK, remember that everything has to be uh, perfect in, in terms of spelling, punctuation and everything. Otherwise, it will take it will take it as wrong. So if you don't get it right the first time, remember that you can try again. OK, but uh, what are we going to do? Take a look. You're going to use these verbs, aggravate, avoid, cause, deal with. Uh, identify, ignore, run into, and solve, okay, to rewrite the sentences. For example, the first one goes, my friend never does anything about his problems. Okay, so if you want to paraphrase that sentence, you have, my friend always ignores his problems. If your friend never does anything to solve his problems, that means he always ignores his problems. That's the thing. What about number two? Maria can look at the broken bicycle and find the problem right away. Basically, what you need to do is you have to substitute the word in bold with one of the expressions from this box on the right. So who wants to participate? Who can tell us what number two is? Number two. You have to use one of the verbs here on the right. Again, it, it goes, Maria can look at the broken bicycle and find the problem right away. You need to substitute the word find with one of the words uh, here. Gabriel Antonio. All right, is Maria can look at a broken bicycle and identifies the pro problem right away. That is correct, okay? Yeah, Maria can look at the broken bicycle and identify the problem right away. That's correct, okay? Very good, thank you, Gabriel. Um, what about number three, okay? You have, my sister is never afraid to try to take care of a difficult problem. How about that one? Who can help me with this? Elisa. Again, my sister is never afraid to deal with at a difficult problem. A difficult problem, yeah, totally. By the way, I think I have a different word here. Okay, yeah, correct. Uh, my sister is never afraid to deal with a difficult problem. That's correct. Okay, very good. Very good, excellent. Thank you, Lisa. So, number four, uh, you have Jill. Uh, Gildong always makes his problems worse. So you have to substitute makes and worse with one of the words from the list. Who wants to try? I want different people to participate, right? So if you have already participated, uh, you'll have to wait until the next exercise. <laughs> so um, who wants to try? Who wants to give it a try now? Madeline. Um. Heel dog always aggravates his problems worse. Uh, the word worse is uh, unnecessary. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's okay. Okay, your sentence is good. You have uh, Heel dog always aggravates his problems. Just like Thank that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Madeline. Okay. Um, we go with the next one. Number five, Ruby always follows the recipe closely to prevent problems when she cooks. So 
What do we have here? Who wants to try? Feeling relaxed tonight. Okay, who wants to who wants to give it a try? Anna Cecilia, and then Elizabeth for the next one. Uh, Ruby always follows the the same the recipe the recipe recipe closely to avoid problems when she cooks. That's correct. Okay, yeah, it's uh, Ruby always follows the, the the recipe closely to avoid problems when she cooks. Right. Okay. Really, really nice. Really, really good. Um, thank you, uh, Anna Cecilia. Just. Okay, the next one was, um, who was it? Elizabeth, right? Do you want to participate, Elizabeth? Yes. Okay, so number six. Ming always unexpectedly encounters problems when he tries to fix things. Ming always solves problems when he tries to fix things. Hmm. Solve problems. Hmm. Well, solve is not the right verb because solve means find a solution, not yes, encounter a problem unexpectedly. It's a different one. You get a second opportunity. <laughs> what is your second option, Elizabeth? Yeah. Um... What does unexpectedly? I'm sorry, mean? unexpectedly. Uh, something that something that occurs unexpectedly happens without you expecting it. In other words, it's a surprise. You didn't know it was going to happen. Uh -huh. I don't know. You don't know. It's okay. But but thank you for your participation, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. It's fine. Um, who can help us then? Who wants to give it a try? Nobody wants to give it a try. Hmm? What's going on? <laughs> okay, let's try. Come on. Anybody can put okay, Elizabeth wants to try. Okay. I try. Okay. Because um me always um um next to me. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. Ah, yeah. Me always run into. Run into. Uh -huh, problems. Runs into problems, huh? When he tries to fix things. That is correct. Ming always runs into problems when he tries to fix things. That's it. When you run into a problem, you encounter a problem unexpectedly. That's what it is. Okay, very good. It's like when you're doing something, you're in the middle of the process, and then you go, uh-oh, okay, what? There is a problem. Oh, my God. We don't have sugar. You have to go to the store to buy some sugar if you want to continue cooking. So that's it. You run into a problem. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, number seven, Carla is great at completely fixing any kind of problem at work. Saul. Can I? Better call Saul. Okay, Saul. Okay, um, number six, right? Seven. Number, no, number seven. seven. Okay, Carla is great at uh, solving any kind of problem at work. Carla is great at solving any kind of problem at work. Correct, okay. And, and, and also, it's very good. Uh, the answer that you provided is good because you're, used, you're using uh, gerund after a preposition, okay, which is something we have studied in section number one. So yeah, Carla is great at solving any kind of problem at work. That is correct. Thank you, Saul. Okay. Uh, and the last one is 
Al is the kind of student who always makes problems for teachers. How about this one? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Except the ones who have participated before. Christina, thank you. Um, Paul is the kind of a student who always causes problems for teachers. Yeah. Al is the kind of student who always causes problems for teachers. That is correct. Very good. Excellent. Very, very good. All right. I'm going to share this with you via WhatsApp. No, this is here. This is supposed to be here. Okay. Now I need to find the group right here. Okay. Uh, now that I'm here, I'm going to be calling attendance once again. Is Carlos Roberto Dominguez here? Carlos Roberto? No. Daisy Magdalena Hernandez. Daisy Magdalena. Elmer Mauricio Salas. I am here, teacher. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno. Gabriela Alejandra. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. You here? Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Uh, Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina. Okay. Going to call the names again at the end. So uh, going back to this, okay, uh, these are the answers. So basically, this is the same exercise that you have right here. Knowledge check 2.5. Okay. Same exercise. Do you have the answers? Well, uh, you can solve the problem now. Okay. Moving on. Now, this is an extra exercise, and I apologize for the low quality of uh, of the picture. Okay, so you'll have to strain your eyes a little bit right now, but I apologize for that. So correct the underlying mistakes in each sentence. Write the correct form of one of the words from the box next to each sentence. Now, the words that you're going to use, and this is an exercise that is similar to this one, the words are aggravate, cause, deal with, identify, ignore, run into, and solve. Cause has been used as an example. Jim said, I'm going to zoom in, okay? Jim said, I solved the problem with the DVD when I spilled my soda on it. Now, grammatically, this is correct. But when you analyze the meaning of the sentence, it doesn't make sense. When you spill soda on an electronic appliance, okay, you don't fix it. You don't solve the problem. You cause a problem, okay? So that's the idea. You need to... Um, find the right verb from the box here on top of the slide and you have to use that word to uh, uh what is the word to uh, substitute okay the word that is underlined okay so that's the idea what about number two grace didn't pay her credit card bill last month when she didn't pay it again this month she only ran into her debt problem so ran into is wrong I mean, grammatically it is correct, but when it comes to when it comes to the meaning, it doesn't make sense. You have to change run into for a different verb. And if you notice the verb is in the past, so that means that you also have to use the verb in past. Okay. Who wants to try? Anybody can participate. Okay, because this is a new exercise. Gabriel. <laughs> okay, Gabriel. Aggravate. Ah, uh -huh. so she only? Aggravate. She only aggravates her aggravate her mm -hmm. debt problem. Okay, yeah. When she didn't pay it again this month, she only aggravated her debt problem. That's correct. Uh, speaking of which, okay, uh, pronunciation of this word. When you pronounce this word, there's a silent letter. The B is silent. So we don't say debt. That doesn't exist. You say debt only. Okay. So the B in debt is silent. Don't pronounce it. Okay. But you have to be careful when you pronounce this because it sounds similar to the word 
death, okay? You know what death is. En la muerte, right? So the thing is, with death, uh, be careful with that, okay? Because uh, basically it's the same pronunciation, but differences at the end. In the first word, you pronounce death, okay? In the second one, you say death. <laughs> That's the word. The pronunciation of the final uh, sound is like death. And this one is dead. Okay, so two different words right there. But the important thing is with the word dead, the B is silent. Don't pronounce it. Don't say debt, but dead. All right. That's a very short uh, pronunciation lesson. Number three. Let's zoom in. I always ask Kate for help with math. She can ignore any problem. So ignore doesn't make sense here. What words can you use to substitute ignore in this sentence? Byron. She can solve any problem. She can solve any problem. That is correct. Thank you, Byron. Very good. Okay. Uh, number four. Let me zoom in. Tim's report was late. He aggravated problems with his computer that he didn't expect. How about this one? He aggravated problems with his computer that he didn't expect. So what do we have? Mm -hmm. Who wants to try? Except Gabriel and Byron, <laughs> because you have participated already. So what about the rest? No, no one? Is it difficult? You can use any of these verbs except aggravate and solve. Cristina Abigail. Um, it can be replaced by identifying. He identified problems with his computer that he didn't expect. Uh, thanks for participating, but it's not the verb identify. But you get a second opportunity, Cristina. If it is not identify, what will be your second choice? Maybe he ran into. He ran into. That is correct. Mm -hmm. He unexpectedly encountered problems with his computer that he didn't expect. He ran into problems with his computer that he did not expect. That is correct. Thank you, Cristina. Okay. All right. Um, what about number five? John cost his weight problem. He still can't fit into his old genes. What about this one? He has a weight problem. That's a little bit, he's a little bit too big. So he cost his weight problem. He still, still, that's the key word, can't fit into his old genes. Who wants to try? You can use any verb except except aggravate, solve, and run into. That leaves you with cause, identify, ignore, and solve. Ana Cecilia. Ignore. Okay. Can you read the whole sentence, please? John causes his... Uh, in, uh, John, John ignored, sorry. Perdón? Ah, you have to read it with the right verb. John ignored. Perdón. John ignored his way problem. He still can't fit into his old genes. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Good. So John ignored. Oops. Oh my God. Okay. Ignore that, please. <laughs> John mm -hmm. ignored his weight problem. He still can fit into his old genes. 
Okay, so number six. Okay, I just showed it. Okay, but, but who wants to try here? Okay, Mike has many problems at work, so he always stays late to identify them. What's the verb here? I just, I'm sorry, I showed it to you, but here we go, right? Okay, because you just saw it, I'm, I'm going to go with it. Okay, he he always stays late, stays late, I'm sorry, to deal with them. Okay, deal with. And, and the last one, uh, quite obviously, that will be, my brother is an amazing auto mechanic. He can look at the car's engine and ignore what is causing problems. So ignore doesn't make sense. What verb can you change ignore for? No. Anybody can participate. Who wants to try? Rufino. I, I try. Okay. Um, my brother is amazing auto mechanic. He can look at a car, car's engine, engine, uh, engine, mm -hmm. and identify what is causing problems. That is correct. Okay, he can look at a car's engine and identify what is causing problems. Very good. Okay, everybody, thanks for your participation, and I apologize that I accidentally showed you number six. Sometimes you click once too many. So thank you. Um, let us continue. Okay, that's the end of uh, uh, lesson A from section number two. Now we're going to start, we're going to start uh, lesson B from section number two. And that starts with this. Do you have any guesses? Okay, read the news story and the comments to the right. Which comments do you agree with? Cartoon-based illness mystifies Japan. Okay, now what's this? I don't know how old you are, but if you are about 40 or so or 35 or so, you may remember this. I believe this happened like in 1998. I remember, okay? I was not in Japan, obviously, but I remember the news. This happened about like in 1998. So maybe, maybe you, you, you remember this if you are old enough and if you heard about it. So cartoon-based illness mystifies Japan. Mystifies, that means that leaves people completely confused. Like, what, what happened? So uh, here we go. We're going to read it together. Okay, I'm going to need uh, some volunteers for pronunciation mostly. Let's begin. Tokyo, uh, who wants to read the first paragraph? You just need to read, okay? Practice your pronunciation and intonation. Anybody can participate. Madeline and then Elizabeth, you will help us with the second one. Tokyo. More than 700 children were rushed to hospitals Tuesday after suffering convulsions. Vomiting. I don't know. What's the pronunciation? Vom vom vomiting. Okay. Vomiting and irritated eyes after watching a popular Japanese cartoon. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was in Tokyo. More than 700 children were rushed to hospitals Tuesday after suffering convulsions, vomiting, and irritated eyes after watching a popular Japanese cartoon. Do you remember this? It, does anybody here remember this? It was in the news like oof, over 20 years ago, like 25 years ago, probably a quarter of a century ago, imagine. Um, Nobody? <laughs> okay, no problem. We'll talk about that later. So what about this one? Uh, Elizabeth, the second paragraph, please. The network said it plans to cancel next week's show if the, if the cause of the incident remains unclear. Yeah, the network said it plans to cancel next week's show if the cause of the incident remains unclear. Okay, so um, before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the first two paragraphs? Any questions? About the vocabulary? Nothing at all? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Volunteer to read paragraph number three. 
Gabriel Antonio, and then Byron. Okay, uh, most of the children developed the symptoms after a, a scene featuring five seconds of flashing red light in the eyes and the show's most popular character. Yeah, most of the children developed the symptoms after a scene featuring five seconds of, red, of flashing red light, okay, in the eyes of the show's most popular character. The character was Pikachu. It was an episode of Pokemon. Okay, so um, thank you, Byron. Goes with the next one. Who wants to read? No. TV executive. Okay, Byron. Hironari Mori say the sense. Passed inspection before broadcast, mm -hmm. but in hindsight, we believe there may have been problem. Mm -hmm. TV executive Hironari Mori said the scene passed inspection before broadcast, but in hindsight, in retrospectiva, right, we believe there might have been problems. They just didn't want to recognize them. Okay, as an adult that uh, as an adult, that part made me blink, you know, like this, made me blink. So for a child, the effect must have been considerable, Maury said. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? What does mean blink? Blink with your eyes when you do this. You blink. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So yeah, as an adult, that part made me blink. So uh, here, Nari Mori was probably like this. Okay. So for a child, the effect must have been considerable. Any question? Any other questions you might have? No more questions. Okay, then we continue. I need another volunteer to read this. This is the longest paragraph. Who can help us? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. Saul. Uh, all the paragraph. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as an adult, uh, adult, that part made me blink so for a child the effect must have been considerable considerable, said. considerable. okay Morris, Morris said dr yukio fukuyama an expert on the brain said that television epilepsy can epilepsy. be sorry epilepsy epilepsy, epilepsy. epilepsy. okay epilepsy. epilepsy can be triggered Tri by sorry. Time. can be triggered trigger trigger mm -hmm by flashing colorful lines fakuyama says parents should be made aware of the danger the networks should identify the definitely. definitely definitely thing of is i don't know issuing of, issuing issuing a health warning warning uh, beforehand he said the mm -hmm. children must have been totally immersed in the program. Psychologist Rika Kayam Kayama said. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Saul. So Dr. Yukio Fukuyama, an expert on the brain, said that television epilepsy can be triggered by flashing colorful lights. Fukuyama says parents should be made aware of the danger. The networks should definitely think of issuing a health warning beforehand, he said. The children must have been totally immersed in the program, psychologist Rika Kayama said. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? Any questions? I can't believe you don't have questions. OK, Elizabeth. <laughs> What does trigger, trigger? Trigger. Trigger means activated. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
television epilepsy can be triggered by flashing colorful lights. It's like television epilepsy can be activated, okay, by flashing colorful lights. Any other questions about the vocabulary? No questions? Okay, then. Moving on. Reader comments. Yuki52 said, these are the comments, right, on the website. I'm certain the flashing lights must have caused the seizures. The seizures is the epilepsy, like, look, look. okay, you know, seizures. I'm certain, okay, she says, that means uh, this person is sure about it. I'm certain the flashing lights must have caused the seizures. Mike, New York City says, or NYZ, it could have been the flashing lights, but I'm not sure, okay? Now, he uses a different word. It could have been, meaning maybe that was the reason, okay? But I'm not sure. Paulo 2008 says, the parents shouldn't have let their kids watch so much TV, okay? The parents shouldn't have let their kids watch so much TV. He blames the parents. Soon he says, the seizures might have been caused by stress. It was not the program. It was stress, he says. Teacher Jim says, that TV executive must have felt pretty embarrassed. Hmm? Chicago mom says, the children shouldn't have been sitting so close to the TV. And M. Garcia says, the TV network should have been made Sorry, should have been more careful. Those are the comments right there. And that's the introduction to what we're going to study now, which is models with multiple uses. Just a second here. I believe something is missing. You just give me a moment. I need to check one thing because I believe something might be missing. But before that, do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? Anything? No questions? Okay, then, if that's the case we are going to go directly into the grammar section. Just let me fix one problem that I have right here. It's gonna take just one second. Thanks for your patience. Okay, lesson objective. By the end of this session, participants will be able to use models to express degrees of certainty, obligation, advice, and opinion. Take a good look. Oops, <laughs> I didn't solve the problem. Okay, models with multiple uses. This is the grammar part. To express degrees of certainty, you have to use must, or the negative form, must not, can't, could, could not, might, might not, or may, may not. Examples. I am certain the flashing lights must have caused the seizures. Now, this person is sure about it. The second one is the seizures might have been caused by stress. Now, what about might? Might expresses that this person is only... Um, saying that this was possible, but this person is not really sure about it, okay? So to express obligation, advice, or opinions, you use should, should not. Do not use must or must not have for obligations, advice, or opinions about the past. The TV network should have been more careful, okay? This is what we studied yesterday, pretty much. The TV network should have been more careful. That's an obligation right there. The networks should think of issuing a health warning. That's advice, okay? If you use should and the verb in base form, that's advice in the present. The, ch the children shouldn't have been sitting so close to the TV. That's to express an opinion. 
Also notice how these models are used in the passive and continuous. But that uh, piece of explanation is probably not enough. Okay, you have this in the manual, by the way. So if you want to study that. Now, there is something that is not in the manual, but I would like you to check out. And that's why I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp. I'm sorry. I uh, Okay. I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp. Okay. It's right there. We're going to study that. Okay, degrees of certainty range from very certain to uncertain. So you can go like the highest position and the scale is like very certain when you are sure of something and the lowest position we can say uh, is when you are completely uncertain about something. So take a look, very certain to show that you think something was probable in the past, you use must have, must not have, can't have, or couldn't have. Examples. Jake had a stomachache last night after dinner. He must have eaten too much. When you say he must have eaten too much, that means that you are like 99.9% .9 sure about this. You think you're right. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's what happened to him. So he must have eaten too much. Maybe you're wrong but you are convinced that you're right, okay? You are certain about it. Second example, Sophia was at the movie with me last night. You couldn't have seen her at the mall. That's impossible. This is the opposite. When you say must have, that means that you are sure that something happened. When you say couldn't have, also can't have is possible. That means that you know that something is impossible. It's the opposite, technically. So again, Sophia was at the movie with, with me last night. You couldn't have seen her at the mall. It's impossible. She wasn't there. Now, look at this. Uncertain. To show that you think something was possible in the past, you use could have, may have, might have, or the negative forms, may not have or might not have okay those are the ones that you use to express that something is or sorry something was possible in the past only a possibility maybe it happened maybe it didn't junho is usually here by now so what happened to him he could have missed the bus this morning or he may have missed the bus this morning, or he might have missed the bus this morning. When you say could have, may have, and might have, you are saying that maybe this is what happened, but you are not sure. You cannot say that you're certain, okay? It's only a possibility, all right? Tanya was supposed to meet me before school, but she didn't. So. She may have not gotten the message or she might not have gotten the message. I sent her a message and say, hey, Tanya, let's meet after school. Sorry, uh, before school, not after, before school. But she didn't arrive, so maybe she didn't see the problem. She didn't get, she, sorry, she didn't see the message. She didn't get the message. So uh, she may not have gotten the message or she might not have gotten the message. We're only speculating here. That means we are not sure. Before we continue about these two uh, kind of rules that we have right here, do you have any questions? Any questions or comments? Anything that is probably not clear? No questions? Everything is clear? As clear as water? No question. Crystal clear? Okay. Clear as uh, water from Aselwate River. Okay. Como fresco horchata. Like horchata, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, to give opinions or advice, there are a greater number of model av models available for talking about the present or future than there are for the past. Okay, now you have more possibilities here. Present or future, you use must, 
or the negative form must not have to have got to had better or had better not or should should not all of these can be used pretty much to express opinions or advice examples parents have got to monitor the shows the children's watch this is an opinion but it's also a piece of advice okay parents have got to monitor the shows their, their children watch and i agree okay i have a daughter and uh, i usually monitor what she sees okay there are certain shows that i really don't like and i say no sorry you cannot watch that show <laughs> she usually goes like why because it's not appropriate sorry okay um the second one the kids had better not spend so much time indoors playing computer games this is to give advice but it's also a piece of opinion mm -hmm. los chicos no deberían verdad pasar tanto tiempo en sus casas jugando juegos de computadora so the kids had better not spend so much time indoors playing computer games there are many uh, possibilities here. I mean, when I say possibilities, I mean options that you can use. Now, what about the past right here? You use should have or should not have. And nothing new here. We studied this yesterday. So you know what this is all about. I should have listened to the advice my parents gave me about having a healthy lifestyle. But I didn't listen. And now I'm on medication. Now. The second one, we should not have ignored the scientists' warnings about global warming. Okay? But we ignore them. And now we're paying the price. Okay? The consequences are here, etc., etc. So that's the thing. Before we continue, do you have any questions about this? If you don't, then we're going to uh, do an exercise. There are several exercises here for us to do. Nothing. Okay, then. Moving on. What are we going to do here? This is the Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. So um, have you heard about the, the, the Bermuda Triangle? They say that very strange things happen there, that the ships get lost, that sometimes uh, planes passing by, apparently traveling time, okay? And some really weird stories, okay? Uh, all related to the Bermuda Triangle. So what are we going to do here? Underline, or in this case, identify, because you can't physically underline anything for because we're on screen. So underline the models in the sentences identify the models in the sentences and then write C for models expressing degrees of certainty or O for models expressing obligation, advice, or opinion. There's an example. Number one, some people are certain the boats and airplanes that have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle must have vanished due to human error. Okay, must have, there's your model right there. And this is a model related to a degree of certainty because this person is sure about it. They said like, yeah, must have, okay. That's a degree of certainty. What about number two? Number two says, others believe the boats and airplanes that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle could have been affected by supernatural forces. What is the model here? That's the first thing that you need to tell me. What's the model? Gabriel Antonio. It is a uh, Bermuda Triangle could have been affected. Could have been. OK, that's right. Could have been. And uh, what kind of model is this? Is it expressing uh, a degree of certainty or obligation, advice, or opinion? In this case, I guess it's expressing degrees of certainty. Yes. Okay. It's expressing a degree of certainty. Okay. Because these person are these persons or these people are speculating about it. Could have been affected by supernatural forces. That means maybe that's what happened. Thank you, Gabriel. Number three, the people who vanished, the people who disappeared, should have known how to use a compass before they entered the Bermuda Triangle. 
how about the sentence? Where is the model? Uh, the model, okay, in this sentence, and what kind of model is that? Does it express uh, a degree of certainty or obligation, advice, or opinion? If you know, please raise your hand. Saul Arnulfo. Okay, I think that the model is should have known. Should have known. That is, whoops. Mm, I apologize. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I apologize. Okay. Order of animations. I, I, what did I do wrong here? Wait a second. This is supposed to work correctly. Let's see. Ah, I see now. Just a moment. Ah, I hate when this happens. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, but I have to fix it. Uh, otherwise, I won't be able to. Uh, you won't be able to solve this uh, on your own. So just let me check. There's number three, number four. This should be number five. This should be number six. Sorry about that. This should be number seven. This one should be number eight. Okay, let's try again, shall we? So, should have known. Okay, <laughs> I just showed you, but okay, Saul, what about this one? Does it express a degree of certainty or obligation, advice, or opinion? It's an obligation, advice, or opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. obligation, advice, or opinion. This person is expressing. Uh, an opinion right here, okay? The people who vanished should have known how to use a compass before they entered the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, thank you. Um, what about number four? It's almost time. Experts say the people who got lost in the Bermuda Triangle must not have been prepared for strong water currents and changing weather patterns. Saul, do you want to try again? Yeah. Okay. I think that it is the model. The model is a must not have been pre pre. Must not have been pre prepared. Okay. 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 Does it express a degree of certainty or obligation, advice, or opinion? And let me see. I think that it is um opinion. Opinion. Let's see. It's actually expressing a degree of certainty because when you say must not have been prepared, that means that this person is speculating about it. This person is convinced that they were definitely not prepared for that. I mean, who could be prepared for something like that? So yeah, in this case, it's uh, a degree of certainty, all right? And the last, but thank you, Saul. Uh, the last one, okay. While many people have successfully navigated through the Bermuda Triangle, there are others who shouldn't have tried as they are now missing. What's the model here? And what does it express? Byron. Shouldn't have tried. Shouldn't have tried, that's the model right there. That is correct, very good. And uh, what does it express? Is it uh, a degree of certainty or is it expressing obligation, advice, or opinion? I think it's an opinion. It's an opinion. So yeah, totally. Okay, this is an opinion. So there are others who shouldn't have tried as they are now missing. Okay, so this person is pretty much expressing an opinion. Okay, everybody, uh, that was very good. Very, very good. It's nine. So I'm just going to call attendance one more time. And uh, and I'm going to give you some final instructions, okay, before we finish. Um, again, when you hear your name, please let me know. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Is Carlos Roberto online tonight? Carlos Roberto? I don't think so. 
Okay, uh, Daisy Magdalena Hernandez. Is Daisy Magdalena here with us tonight? Nope. What about Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala? Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Nope. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Not here. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Is Juan Eduardo online? No. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Is Wendy Carolina? Has Wendy Carolina joined the meeting? No. Several people are missing today. Okay, uh, one thing, always remember, I'm going to speak Spanish right now. Siempre acuérdense que eh, es bien importante conectarse a las clases. Súper importante porque cada minuto, bueno, Zoom cuenta cada minuto que usted está conectado y cada minuto suma al final, ¿verdad? Suma al final su porcentaje de participación. Así que siempre que puedan, conéctense, conéctense. En caso que sea imposible, pues, bueno, ni modo, pero eh, se requiere su participación constante y, y por participación entendemos en este caso que se conecten a las clases. Aunque entren ya tardecito, igual conéctense. Si usted solo se logró conectar media hora, entonces esos 30 minutos le suman a usted al final su porcentaje de participación, que tiene que llegar a 80% como mínimo. Si no llega, entonces ahí ya nos metemos... And difficulties. Okay. Um, everybody, thank you. Tomorrow we are going to finish section number section number two. Yeah, lesson B. And also there is the midterm. Okay, so uh we're going to go uh, over all that, the rest of the session section, and then we're going to cover the midterm. Okay. Thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.